These are the plaintiffs, Gianna Riccardelli and Nicholas Waddington. Gianna says she and the defendant were together for four years, and they adopted a cat named Finn. When they split up, the defendant took care of Finn for a while, and when she asked for him back, the defendant refused. And here they are. They're suing for $4,151.73, the amount they're owed for the cat and hotel expenses. This is the defendant, Casey Renaud. She says they split up and the plaintiff left Finn with her with no discussion about ever picking him up. She gave her no money to care for Finn. She paid all of his expenses for almost two years. Bottom line, this woman abandoned her cat. She's not giving him back and she owes this woman Zippo. She's accused of cat nabbing. All parties, please raise your right hand. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Riccardelli and Mr. Waddington, you are suing Ms. Renaud for $4,151.73 in expenses, as well as the cost of a cat that she refuses to return to you. Tell me what happened. Uh, let's start with you, Ms. Riccardelli. Um, so Casey and I used to date um, during the time that we dated. We lived together. We adopted a few cats together, one of them being Finn. Um, since How many cats did you adopt together? Um, we ended up having, I believe, five cats when we broke up. So, And how long were you guys together? together? About four years. Okay. Um, so we adopted Finn in 2018, um, and he always seemed to have, like, a closer bond with me than with her. He would, like, snuggle with me all the time. People would joke that, like, Finn is Gia's cat, you know. Um, so when we broke up, um, I asked Casey if I could take Finn with me when I moved to California, and she said yes. Um, so I did end up flying to California with Finn. Um, I stayed with my mom uh, in her travel trailer that she bought for me to live in as like a place for me to go. Um, and we had been kind of talking back and forth and it was a little confusing, like whether or not we might get back together. So I had wanted to come back to Florida. I thought I'd made a mistake in going to California. So I went with Finn back to Florida and that's when Casey informed me that we would not be getting back together. Um, so I decided to go back to California again. But because I was living with my mom, uh, she said that I couldn't bring Finn back with me because she's not a big fan of animals. Um, so Casey and I made a verbal agreement that she would take care of Finn for me until I was able to come back and get him when I had pet-friendly housing. Um, so... It took me a little while to do that, you know, with COVID. Basically, when you came back and you thought maybe you guys would be working things out, that was when? What month and year? That was June of 2020. Okay. And so that doesn't work out. And then that, since that time, Finn has been with her, correct? Yes. All right. So now, so you leave Finn with her. And the understanding is that when you get your a place that's where you can have Finn, you will take Finn back. You expect yes. that it's going to be soon, though, and then a year and a half passes, right? Yes. So during that year and a half, there are numerous times where you two discuss Finn. Now, sometimes, Ms. Renaud, you would be asking if she could contribute some money, either for litter or, or food or something, correct? Correct. You always kind of felt bad about doing it, but you would do it and she would send the money, right? That's correct. So, uh, Ms. Renaud, wasn't it your understanding that you were caretaking for Finn and that you would return Finn to her um, when she was ready, no matter when that was? For a while, um, I didn't expect it to be uh, almost two years. Um, and she didn't give me an estimate. And I know that she didn't know uh, how long it would be. But um, for a while, and I don't know exactly when, uh, how often we were communicating. Um, it was I do, because I've read two years, almost two years <laughs> worth of text. So I do know. But so the, a couple of months would pass and either she or you would mention about the fact that she would be picking up Finn at some point. 
And each of you would acknowledge it. One time you just ask her, listen, are you going to be, are you still thinking of Finn as your cat? And are you still going to pay? Yes, absolutely. Why? Do you need anything? Yeah, I need money for this or that. And then she'd send it. So in the middle of the summer in 2021, she says to you, listen, I think in January I will be able to take Finn. And you say, okay. So in, right, that happened. Right. So yes. from the middle of 2021 until the end of 2021, there is no confusion at all. Even if you could say that there's confusion before that, there's certainly no confusion then. And then she texts you in December and she tells you, I'm going to go visit my family. Because where do you live in California now, Gianna? No, actually, we just moved to Pennsylvania. Oh, geez. All right. So you and Miss, what is Mr. Waddington's relationship with you? Uh, he's my current partner. OK, um, so. Um, so now the two of you decide that you're going to go to Georgia to see, I guess, your family. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, so you tell her that, listen, I'm going to be in Georgia so I can take where in Georgia. Savannah. And how far is Savannah from Jacksonville? About an hour and a half, two hours. Yep. OK, drive. so um, so you tell her I can come down and get Finn. And what do you say, Ms. Renaud? At first, I think I did uh, mention that I wasn't entirely comfortable with it. Um, but oh, really? Very oh, then let me refresh your recollection about what you said. <laughs> Hold on a second. And you guys had a, actually a very uh, admirable relationship as uh, people who've been a big part of each other's lives. You, I mean, there's the, the texting was pretty you kept in touch um, a lot. Like you would send pictures of Finn to her. Like it was it was a, 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 a you know, a, a laudable effort at keeping uh, you know, a decent relationship with someone who is a big part of your life. In October, you do say, I'm sure he'll miss his pals, but I think he'll be OK. I'll send you updates on him for sure. How's he been doing today? And then, oh, really well, blah, 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 blah. OK, so that's October. Then we get to December 20th. Hey, I think I may be coming to Jacksonville a little after New Year's to pick up Finn, if that would work for you. Do you know if he's caught up on his shots? Also, what litter and food does he like? You say, I've been taking them each to get their shots when I have the money, but Finn hasn't gone. He's eating the green pure. You give her the answers. At no point on December 25th or 20, 20th are you saying, I'm not giving you this cat back. December 25th, hey, Merry Christmas. Nick and I just booked our trip down to Savannah to see my family for a few days, and we're planning on heading down to Jacksonville on 1-1 one -one to pick up Finn. Does that work for you? You don't answer. Two days later, hey, does 1-1 one -one work for us to come get Finn? Are you able to get him into the vet before then? You say, I'm not 100% positive if I'll have time to take him in by then. But I can try. The holidays have been super busy, blah, blah. You don't say you're not getting the cat. She tells you, OK, I booked an appointment for him at 11 a.m. with Forever Vet. So we're all set. You say to her, did my mom text you yesterday? Because now you are having cold feet. Right, Ms. Renaud? Right. And you had your mother text her? I didn't have my mother text her. Um, I didn't ask anyone or tell anyone to reach out to Gianna. Um, of course, I was filling my mom in uh, and I had been talking to her about how I was nervous about how Finn would do. Because I know when he was in California with her, she would send me videos of him uh, kind of crying. And like he just seemed very lonely um, and not very happy. I don't know if it was just because he was in the RV, but I was really worried about him and thinking that he might not be happy. So I was filling my mother in and she's very uh, confrontational. She didn't tell me that she had reached out until after, um, and I didn't know exactly what she said, but she essentially told me that she reached out to Gianna. Um, so I was confirming that with her. Yeah, she reached out to Gianna and kind of gave her a guilt trip about this whole thing. And Gianna, you didn't even respond to her mom. How come? Honestly, I didn't know what to say, and I didn't feel the need to respond to, respond to her. Well, she was kind of loving. I read the text. She's like, I'll always love you. You know, you're, you're a great person. I mean, and she kind of yeah, got mad that you didn't respond, that. too. Said, boy, yeah. I, I at least thought you'd respect me enough to respond. Yeah, I just, it felt weird. I just didn't want to respond So to you say, did my mom text you? Yes, she did. Oh, okay. Just promise you'll give him lots of love, okay? I'm going to miss him a lot. I promise with my whole heart. I know this is going to be tough for you, but I swear he's going to be in great hands. We're so excited to have him. And then December 30th, 
what side of town do you live on? And you say, off the south side, I'm Bay Meadows. Then you say to her, I do want to let you know that I've had symptoms of COVID, because I guess you're stalling, bringing the I'm not confrontational uh, <laughs> phrase to uh, its zenith. All right. I do want you to know I've had to, oh, keep me posted on that. We can mask up. December 30th. Are you awake? Yeah, what's up? And this is when you finally say something, Ms. Renaud. I'm really struggling with you taking Finn away from his family. It's been making me sick worrying about it. He loves Olivia. Who's Olivia? A cat? Uh, she's uh, my other cat. They okay. have a, a she loves Olivia. And if we separate them, it's going to traumatize them both. And the other cat. How come you didn't think about all this before? Like, in other words, when she can't take the cat, the appropriate thing to say to her is you've got a month or two to figure it out. After that, I think it's going to be too late. Why don't you do that instead of spending a year and a half telling her you'll give her the cat back? In hindsight, I 100% should have done that. Um, I think I was. Oh my God, to add insult her. to injury, is that Finn on the bed behind you? It is. Ah, oh, jeez. I think I was trying to do my best to stick to my word and let her have him, but in the end, it was just bothering me so much. Um, I was just worried that he Right, but happy. see, you be well within your rights. If you tell somebody you can have them when you're ready, and then when you're ready isn't a reasonable amount of time, what you do is you don't keep leading the person on and telling them, yeah, no problem, when you, in June, uh, January, you know, like, you've got to give them some notice that they can no longer count on you watching the cat, because it sounds awful that she left the cat for a year and a half, right? But she left the cat for the year and a half with you, who was providing a loving home and saying that you'd give her back to them. So if you're telling someone there's no rush, then she feels there's no rush, you know, justifiably, because that's what you let her on to believe. Uh, this goes on and on. And then somebody else steps in. Who steps in? The person uh, uh, that you're in a relationship with steps in and says, she's too nice. You better not come here. I'll call the cops or something. It, whatever. Right. Um, so you don't pick up the cat. Now, you have a lawsuit for several things. One of the things you have a lawsuit for is five nights at a hotel. Five nights at a hotel where? Our plan was to stop in Charlotte on the way down and then stay a couple nights in Savannah to visit family, and then on the way back up, stay in Charlotte again. That was, those are the hotels, uh, I believe. Right, but weren't you doing that anyway because you were coming to see your, your family? Actually, no, we kind of planned the trip because uh, it coincided timing-wise with us moving to our apartment, and we thought it would be nice to see my family. Like, they invited us to come, but... We wouldn't have gone if we weren't already going down to get Finn around that time anyway. So that's the reason we took the trip. We wouldn't have gone if we weren't already planning on getting Finn. December 20th, her text says, hey, I think I may be coming to Jacksonville a little after New Year's to pick up Finn if that would work for you. And you say yes. Did you submit any of the uh, receipts for the hotels? Uh, yes, today we did. And does it total $912.98? That looks right. $100.42. For the first night in Charlotte, mm -hmm. um, two eighty-seven eighty-six. For when we went back to Charlotte on the way back up, um, four sixteen thirty-seven was our three nights in Savannah. What do you want to see happen here, Gianna? Um, I want my cat back. I want Finn. Um, I was under the impression that I could come and get him whenever I was ready. I felt like I did my due diligence in telling Casey well in advance when I was planning on coming to get him. And she had always been cooperative until less than 36 hours before we, we were supposed to go get him. Um, so I really just want my cat. I, yeah. And I would like reimbursement for the trip, but really I just want my cat. And Mr. Waddington, is there anything you want to add? Uh, I agree. Um, I would be satisfied with Finn being returned rightfully. Um, right now, the amount we spent on the trip down wasn't insignificant and to spend that much and then be told that if we show up the cops will be called uh we had to turn right back around and well you never said you never set out to jacksonville though right no not, not right Savannah. right you had to turn right back around and go back to i guess at cal was it california at that time or you were already in pennsylvania yeah right 1600 miles right and ms renaud what is it that you think should happen here? Um, I think being reimbursed would be fair. Um, I don't think that it would be what's best for Finn to be rehomed, however. He has a very close bond with me now. I mean, we are very close now. Uh, we literally sleep together every night, like snuggled up. Um, and he is always with Olivia. Um, they always cuddle, they snuggle all the time. 
Um, and I just, I don't think that it would be good for him to uh, kind of separate him from the, the only family that he's known, I mean, forever since we adopted him, but, you know, me for the last a year and a half. All right. Um, I'm not going to rehome Finn. Uh, I don't feel good about it. I do, however, believe that you violated the agreement. Um, in a case like this, a judge has to make a decision, and I happen to have the authority to rehome a pet um, because you guys agree to this when you come to the people's court. In this situation, I'm not going to do it, but I do find that you took her cat. So she's asking for $3,000 for a cat. You have to understand that in the eyes of the law, pets are property. So the question is truly, what is the cat worth? Not what is the cat worth to you or to Casey. What is the cat worth on the open market? How old is Finn? He's five. Right. When he was cute and little, he was purchased for 20 bucks. You understand what I'm saying? That there's not a lot of value in the cat. I have, however, thought long and hard about the hotels. Do you have any proof of the gas? Um, yes, uh, we have bank statements, which I believe we submitted. Because the hotels weren't what you said. The hotels uh, total $804.65. And so now I want to hear about the gas. $161.08. What bank statement should I be looking at to verify that? Um, there should be one that says uh, Nick bank statement. Um, should be two pages. Here's what's going to happen, folks. I'm not rehoming the cat. I do find um, that the purpose of her trip was to pick up the cat. Uh, it, it, that doesn't mean she can't visit her parents on the way down. When she brings it up in the summer, Ms. Renaud, she specifically says to you, I'm going to pick up the cat in January. Then she says, we booked our tickets to pick up Finn. I'm going to stop in Georgia and visit my parents. Of course she should. She's driving down. She's going right by Savannah. Of course she should. I don't believe that that trip would have happened if it weren't for her intending to pick up Finn. So I am going to order you to recompense them for their expenses. I find their expenses to be $804.65 for the hotels, plus $130.41 for gas, and that totals $935.06. But um, the cat now becomes the issue and what value I put on the cat. And again, I have to remind you that the value I put is the value that the cat could get if you were to sell the cat on the open market, a five-year-old okay. cat. I'm ordering the hotels, I'm ordering the gas, and I'm ordering, I'm setting a completely arbitrary value on the cat of $100, which is basically ridiculous and I'm go but I'm angry at how this shook out and that ends up being a total judgment in favor of the plaintiffs in the amount of $1,035.06 that's my verdict well the judge has made her decision in this case the plaintiffs recover $1,035 not the 4,000 that they were seeking and the cat Finn stays with the defendant Casey Let's talk to Gianna and uh, Nicholas, the plaintiffs. What do you think about this outcome, folks? Um, I'm glad that we will be getting compensated for the trip that we took down to get him, but I'm really disappointed that I don't get to have my cat back. You know, it's really tough. The judge made the decision not to rehouse the cat. Finn is going to stay with Casey. I mean, she looked very happy. She's obviously well taken care of, and there's no question Casey really loves her. So at least you have the satisfaction to know she's being very well taken care of. Would that be right? Um, actually, I forgot to bring up something. Um, I'm concerned that he hasn't been to see the vet in uh, two years. All right. Well, you're going to have to live with the judge's decision in this case. Let's talk to Casey. Casey, how about it? How do you feel about the outcome? Uh, I'm happy that uh, Finn gets to stay with his family. Um, if it makes Gianna feel any better, um, he has recently gone to the vet. He is fully vaccinated. Well, listen, you get to keep Finn. And as you mentioned, he has been to the vet. He is vaccinated so that the, the plaintiffs can feel comfortable about that. All right. Well, congratulations. Take good care of Finn. He looks like he's happy in his place. Thank okay. You, happy. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Always a tough case when it comes to... Uh, deciding on who gets to keep a pet. No question about it. Harvey, what do you think about this? So, Doug, look, the cat was not returned because this isn't, the element here is simply humanity. Sometimes judges can look at situations and say, 
I'm going to do not just what the law says, but I'm going to do what's just, what's right, and what is not going to cause anguish. And this would have caused anguish when the cat is with somebody else for two years. That cat believes that it belongs to the person who's been caring for it for two years, and that person who cares for it obviously got attached. So humanity rules. If I'm driving on a two-lane street with parking allowed on both sides and I'm going very slowly and someone flings their car door open just as I'm passing their space, whose fault is it if I tore their door off? This is a pretty common accident. It yep. happens all the time when people are parallel parking, usually on a busy street, but it doesn't have to be a busy street. And when you parallel park next to somebody, you're going to get pretty close to their car as you're driving by. And I think it's incumbent on the person inside the car to look carefully before they open their door on a busy street. So yeah, if the street they have that, a duty of care to not open it. There. I think it's the car door opener as well. I don't yeah. I don't think I have to watch out for flying car doors. I think right. that I, I, I'm in the lane. I'm driving where I'm allowed to be. And someone all of a sudden throws a projectile in front of me. Right. Then it's not my fault that I hit it. Yeah.